Alrighty. The lovely wife stopped by to bring me something to eat. I don't know why. I'm a fat dude. Oh yeah, <laughs> that might be why I'm a fat dude. Um, now I have the most awesome wife in the world. Something else. <clears throat> so I wet this down right here in the crease so it'll bend to these ear. This is one of those times uh, where I'm going to use the little bar clamps. Only because it's going to make things... I don't want to be super thick here. I want it to fit the belt, but I need to know where to stitch. And I'm just going to hold that right up in there and clamp down onto it. And it doesn't have to clamp down super tight. Just so I can get an idea of how much room I've got to stitch. And I kind of know, because I did measure and everything. But I want to make sure that I've got enough room to slide a belt through there. I did one that I thought I had everything measured right. And it just didn't quite have enough room to slide a belt through when it was all said and done. So, I've skived up on the back side here. And I'm going to... Oh, what can I make a mark with? I'll be stitching over the top of it, so... I'm going to leave a little room below the belt. At least a quarter of an inch or so. Maybe three sixteenths. Or three eighths. And just, just make a lightly mark. draw a line across. <clears throat> and that'll tell me how high I can go with my stitch line. And you got to remember once you stitch it down, it's going to be tight. And if I was to take my clamp here, and line that up right on that stitch line you'll see that it's going to be a snug fit for an inch and a half belt. Now that's okay because over time it'll stretch out a little bit and I will leave the belt blank in here. I'm going to soak the top down, soak the belt loop down and leave that belt blank in there and let it form around it a little bit. Not really form, just kind of it'll help to stretch the leather out a little bit. So, first I'm going to lay this down where I want it. Take a ball pointed stylus and I'm just gonna stay in back under there a little. If you angle it away from your piece here, I'll have to show some of my little tricks someday. <clears throat> and now I know right where I can glue. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to take an awl since this is finished. I'm not going to scratch all the way to the edge that I made. I shouldn't say it's finished, but all it needs is a top coat right now. And I always wait till last for that. We'll take a little of our glue. I don't want to go right up to the edge because it's just not necessary. <clears throat> Give that some time to set up and then I'll glue it and I will clamp it and leave it sit. You need to remember with something like uh, contact cement, it gets its name because it sticks on contact <laughs> and it sticks to itself on contact. So I'm just going to leave that sit with the clamp on it for a while. 
and I'll move on to something else. So I'll be back. All right, took my clamp off. Um, since I've got the welt here, I need to, something solid under here to, to uh, punch my holes. So I'm just going to use my granite. Uh, and in case anybody's wondering again, this is just a cutout from a uh, bathroom sink. Works great. Does everything I need it to do. Put a piece of leather back there so I don't uh, run one of my uh, bulky thingies through it. And I'm just going to kind of, this one I'm just going to kind of eyeball it a little bit. Make sure it goes all the way through. Nothing worse than it not going all the way through. There we go. When you take your uh, chisel out, and you want to rock it the the long way. You can wiggle it the short way. That's going to do nothing but risk breaking your tool. Ask me how I know. Yes, I've broken them. Hear my dogs? <laughs> Neighbor must be home. This is thick leather. simple just around there I'm gonna go ahead and uh, oh what am I gonna use for thread you know I think I've got a little of this brown left that I want to use up so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'm gonna stitch this regular saddle stitch you don't need to see me do that again do you all right well, I got her stitched up. I just made that little groove in here when I found my tool. And uh, grooved it. Put my belt blank back in here. And clamped it down. So it should form a little bit around the belt blank. That should work out pretty well. It has in the past anyway. We're going to leave that sit overnight. I'm going to go in and visit with my wife. Because I like her. Uh, after 30 years, I better like her. <laughs> anyway, y'all stay safe and God bless, and I'll be back. Back at it. <clears throat> Set overnight. Everything looks good. I will. Well, stubborn clamp. I need to touch up that belt loop anyway, but slide the belt blank out. You see that loop's nicely formed. And belt slides through there. A little stiff, but that's to be expected. So, we got it that far. Next step is, I want to touch up all this, I had to dye around the holes, stitch holes here, because, well, they just needed it. And then I'll touch this up here, a little sanding, and what will happen is when you're looking at the back side, if you look at that, there's a crappy piece of leather, but uh, when you bend it back like that, it'll kind of, even if you've got it real nice and smooth, it'll expose those, that bit again, a little sandpaper, buff it out a little. And a uh, little dye, little tan coat, you'll never know. So, that's 
that's all I'm going to do. I have a Christmas program tonight for my grandkids. I'm kind of excited about going to that. That's all she takes, a little bit of dye, put some tan coat back on there, we'll be ready to move on, but the dye and tan coat are going to have to dry overnight, because that's just the way I like to do it. So, we'll get back on this tomorrow. <laughs>